Hello, Pen and Scholars. Welcome to the very last Roadrunner installment of Romero Reads Aloud. Our voting window is coming to a close. I had to go rescue a book, the one I'm going to be reading to you, from my library so I could share it before we vote um, over the next couple of weeks for your favorite Roadrunner and Coyote books. For some of you, this is going to be a review. For my fourth and fifth graders, there's a really good chance that you um, were able to join us in the story pit for our read aloud for our brand new third graders. Uh, we have a really fun book today. It is a nonfiction book and it focuses on something that you probably really enjoy. Um, when I was doing lessons on our story in the library, we talked a lot about figurative language and idioms in the classroom, cultural sayings, wor uh, words or expressions that don't really mean what they sound like. So I will go ahead and begin with our read aloud. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. If you want, you can go ahead and review all the other Roadrunner and Coyote books for our voting that's gonna start next week. Our read aloud today this is a fun book called How the Cookie Crumbled. And the, getting a lot of glare here, so I'm going to make sure I'm in the best position for it. How the Cookie Crumbled. The true and not so true stories of the invention of the chocolate chip cookie. And I want to do, um, just interject really quickly and thank the good folks at the Simon & Schuster for allowing us to read and present this book during uh, the digital, virtual learning uh, due to COVID. Crunch, 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 mmm. Everyone loves chocolate chip cookies, but not everyone knows where they come from, came from. Meet Ruth Wakefield, the talented chef and entrepreneur who started a restaurant, wrote a cookbook, and invented this delicious dessert. But just how did she do it, do you ask? That's where things get messy. So sit back, grab a cookie, read a story, or three, about how this round, crispy, chocolatey piece of perfection came to be. Which tale is true? Well, what do you think? In this unique and clever picture book, Gilbert Ford sheds a little light on the nation's favorite sweet treat and reminds smart cookies everywhere that just because a story is told doesn't always mean it's true. Good for us to remember. Gilbert Ford's How the Cookie Crumbled. The true and not so true stories of the invention of the chocolate chip cookie. Do these look familiar? Ever wonder where these round, crispy, chocolatey pieces of perfection came from? Everyone agrees the chocolate chip cookie was invented by Ruth Wakefield, but how did she do it? That's where the story gets messy. I'm here to show you some ways it could have happened. So sit back, grab a cookie, and let me sweep up the crumbs. Ever since Ruth was old enough to hold a spoon, she is helping out her grandma in the kitchen. She'd carefully pour the scalding cheese into a rum tum ditty and measure with precision the flour in her applesauce cakes. You see, to Ruth, cooking was a science, and the kitchen was her lab. So no one was surprised when Ruth went off to college to study nutrition. After she finished school, Ruth went on to teach cooking in high school. Although she enjoyed leading her classes, she hungered for something more. Then Ruth met Kenneth Wakefield, who shared her passion for cooking. He quickly became the apple of her eye, and it wasn't long before they were married and cooking up a plan to run their own restaurant. But their plan didn't fall into place until four years later. It was 1930, the beginning of the Great Depression. With a young son in tow, it was not an ideal time to open a restaurant. But when our lovebirds found an old toll house in Whitman, Massachusetts, they knew it was now or never. Ruth and Kenneth scraped up their savings, signed on the dotted line, and fixed the place up, 
naming it the Toll House Inn. Ruth didn't let hard times stop her from opening her restaurant. She ran a tight ship, planning the menu and doing most of the cooking herself, while Kenneth ordered food and helped out in the kitchen. Ruth's staff said she was one tough cookie to work for. She demanded that the servers set the tables flawlessly, and she even measured the distance between the fork and the plate for accuracy. As diners began to trickle into the Toll House Inn, Ruth's hard work sure paid off. She sent her customers home with full stomachs and a craving to come back for more. Now, here's the part where Ruth invents the chocolate chip cookie. The trouble is, no one can agree on how she did it. Here are three ways the story has been told. The Disaster as one tale goes, it all began when Ruth was whipping up a batch of butter drop dew cookies. Her mixer was spinning dough like a tornado and it knocked a Nestle chocolate bar off the shelf. The chocolate fell right into the mix and wow, what a disaster! But the grill man suggested that Ruth bake the cookies anyway. Ruth gave it a try and when she pulled those cookies from the oven, she discovered pure heaven. The substitute. Ruth was in a hurry. Our talented chef had forgotten to order baking chocolate, so she improvised by taking an ice pick to a Nestle chocolate bar. She thought that by sprinkling the chunks into her dough, the chocolate would melt evenly. But when she pulled the cookies from the oven, boy was she wrong. They're ruined, she cried. Of course, someone else in the kitchen took a bite and said, Mmm, when Ruth decided to try one herself, she agreed. The Mastermind While returning from a trip to Egypt, Ruth was pondering an old cookie recipe when inspiration struck her. See how that kind of looks like a chocolate chip cookie? Ruth got back to her kitchen and went straight to work, mixing up the dough. Then she deliberately took an ice pick to that chocolate bar. Ruth dropped the chunks into the mix. After the timer dinged, Ruth pulled the cookies from the oven and looked at her invention. It was exactly how she imagined it. She shut her eyes, took a bite, and savored the warm, gooey chocolate as it melted right in her mouth. Mmm-hmm. So, which version do you believe? The disaster, although it is possible that the candy bar fell straight into the dough, this tale seems a little half-baked. The substitute. Do you think that Ruth, who went to school and studied nutrition, didn't know how semi-sweet chocolate would melt when she cooked it? That's a little hard to swallow. But here's some food for thought. The mastermind. Isn't it possible that Ruth actually knew what she was doing? Anyone who knew Ruth would tell you she had a reputation for inventing delicious desserts at the Toll House Inn, and she traveled far and wide to find new recipes. If you ask me, Ruth deserves some credit. She is one smart cookie. Now, let's get back to the story. Ruth placed the cookies on a platter, took a deep breath, and held them high. Then she marched into the dining room and presented her dessert to the customers. The diners pushed back their plates and reached for a cookie. The cookies were a hit. Word spread about Ruth's Toll House chocolate crunch cookies, and folks drove for miles around to try one. So Ruth added more tables and expanded her restaurant. People begged Ruth for her recipe, and she didn't mind sharing it one bit. She even sent it to the newspaper. Soon, everyone in Boston was baking Toll House chocolate crunch cookies. But it wasn't until Ruth was interviewed on the Betty Crocker radio show that word really spread. Now bakers all across the nation were talking about Ruth's cookies. Meanwhile, the managers at the Nestle headquarters scratched their heads at the spike in sale of their candy bars. When they discovered that the cause was Ruth's chocolate crunch cookies, they begged for her recipe. 
Ruth gave it to him, and Nestle began to produce chocolate chips designed specifically for Ruth's cookies. And Ruth? Legend has it she was awarded a lifetime supply of Nestle chocolate. By the 1940s, every grocery store in America carried the Toll House cookie recipe on each bag of Nestle chocolate chips. From kitchen to kitchen across the country, cookies were baking. After a long day in her kitchen, Ruth was able to sit and enjoy the sweet taste of success and all of its crunchy, gooey, chocolatey perfection. What do you notice about the moon there? And that, my friends, is how the cookie crumbled. Author's note. The chocolate chip cookie certainly put Ruth's Toll House in on the map, but Ruth didn't stop there. She went on to publish a best-selling cookbook, Ruth Wakefield's Toll House Tried and True Recipes. It contained all her dishes, including the ones her grandmother taught her. The book stayed in print for a long time. Ruth's restaurant grew to sit 1,000 people. Eleanor Roosevelt, Julia Child, Cole Porter, Joe DiMaggio, Bette Davis, and a young John F. Kennedy all stopped by the joint. The Toll House Inn sent American troops chocolate chip cookies during World War II so they could enjoy a taste of home while they were away fighting. Ruth and Kenneth eventually retired in 1966, selling their Toll House Inn. The restaurant stayed open, selling Ruth's Toll House chocolate crunch cookies until the establishment burned down in 1984, but Ruth's recipe didn't go up in smoke. In 1997, chocolate chip cookies were made the official state cookie of Massachusetts. Now, most people would consider the chocolate chip cookie a staple of the entire United States. It's arguably the nation's favorite cookie. There are many tall tales claiming Ruth's chocolate chip cookie recipe was an accident, fabricated by kitchen helpers or even by Nestle, who thought that people would appreciate a story about dumb luck. However, in a later interview, Ruth said her invention was no accident. Now, you have chocolate chip cookies in the brain. They have a recipe here that you can still find on the bag of Nestle chocolate chips. Have a wonderful day, and looking forward to seeing the results of our Latham Enchantment vote coming up in a couple of weeks. Take care.